Welcome back to Primitive Organic Garden. Today I am about a mile down the road at my more permaculture type of garden. A place where I don't really do annual vegetable crops, I do more fruit trees. This is part of an ongoing series on growing citrus from seed, and yes you should. A lot of people will tell you don't grow fruit trees from seed because most of them suffer from extreme heterozygosity and there will be a lot of recombination and the type of fruit that you get off of a tree that you started from seed probably will not resemble the original fruit that you harvested the seed from. That's okay. Trees that are started from seed are often significantly more vigorous, grow faster, or more resilient to both biotic and abiotic stresses, whether it's extreme weather events, insect disease pressure. A tree that's started from seed is almost always better from a plant health perspective than a tree that was a clone or a cutting or graft. However, the fruit qualities that you get may not be ideal. That's okay. If you know about grafting of fruit trees, start your fruit trees from seed, and if the fruits that you get turn out to be absolutely awful, just go to the nursery, buy some cultivars, and graft the cultivar branches right on to the plants you started from seed. They'll be some of the best rootstock plants you have. Um, I started these citrus trees from seed about a year and a half ago. They went through an extremely cold winter and I did not bring them in. We got down to the 20s. They had a little bit of plastic on them, but uh, they made it. They were uh, dead looking brown stems two, three months ago, and now they've uh, put on new green leaves. Um, planting citrus trees is fairly easy here in South Carolina. We do have a lot of clay, which they don't enjoy. Um, luckily this property here had a lot of kind of sand and topsoil brought into it a few decades ago, and most of that is still above the clay hard pan. Uh, the most important thing to think about when you're planting a citrus tree or other fruit trees is probably timing. Um, I'm doing this right before 10 days of scattered thunderstorms so that I'm not going to have to worry about watering these trees. Um, citrus trees are quite drought tolerant anyway. Um, I'm going light on the mulch because I don't want them to suffer from any types of root rots being too wet. They need well drained soil. Soil here is quite sandy although there is a large amount of grass, perennial grass roots that I need to remove. Uh, you always want to make sure the hole you dig for a fruit tree is at least twice as wide in diameter as the pot the tree is in. Um, these are about, I don't know, six or eight inches across in diameter. This hole is easily twice that. You can go wider if you like, you'll just have to backfill some of it. The hole doesn't necessarily need to be extremely deep, but I do like to dig the hole about twice as deep as the depth of the pot and then backfill it. Uh, you do not want to bury citrus trees. They need well-draining soil. They don't like their lower stems and crowns in the ground getting wet. So dig a nice deep hole so that you can break up all of the hard pan, remove all the roots, but then make sure to refill at least half of that hole so that the tree is not getting buried. Um, I generally do these holes just by taking the shovel around the edge and I will jump on the shovel. So I'll place it on the edge, jump on the shovel, allow it to sink in. I do that all the way around. Once I've done that all the way around, I can lift the grass root that was previously this hole. I can lift that out of there. I want to try to save as much of this native sandy loam soil as possible, but I don't want all of these roots getting in here and rerooting. Um, <coughs> citrus trees are in clay pots to keep them quite well drained. I'm going to add a small amount of cow compost, not too much compost. We don't want the hole to be waterlogged. A little bit of pine bark mulch with some worm castings in it. The main goal here is just to really dig in deep with your hands and the shovels, break up all this hard pan. And then I usually take the trencher shovel and I'll put it on the edges here and I'll just give it a good whack and kind of a lift. So we're aerating the soil a little bit here and we're giving these roots a little bit of a head start so that when they try to expand laterally, at least some of this ground will have been slightly broken up which will allow the roots to find small cracks and crevices that they can start to penetrate and they'll go from there. 